Hello again. Quick mouthful of coffee. Ah, oh, before I begin. Right. Take 5,642 of the reassembly of the Fisher Price Alpha Probe. So I am going to save you all the stuff that went on this morning when I was playing around with this, trying to get it all back together because I had some issues. And I believe I have them resolved now. So I'm going to get back into this and put the alpha probe back together. So where do we begin? This goes on last. So I'm just going to set that aside for a minute. And we begin by flipping it over. I cleaned everything yesterday. I gave it all a wash in the kitchen sink with a bit of warm soapy water and gave it all a nice cleaning. Then let it dry in the kitchen overnight where it's nice and warm. And now it's all ready to go back together. But I had some issues. I had some issues putting it back together, which I'll explain to you as I go along here. So next piece to go in is this. Mm, okay, so these bits, let's see, that goes in like that. And then that kind of slots in there. I need my glasses. And I got them. Okay. What's going on here? I don't always need my glasses, but some of this stuff I do. Okay. Yeah, one of the issues was that I just felt like I wasn't, things were not snapping into position nicely now. I've made a mistake already. And that is that before you put this piece in, you gotta put in the hatches. So the hatch doors are actually marked with left and right. I can't read it, but oh, that's the right side. You put them in a bit diagonally like that. Good to go. This one says left in there. It's a little bit of a procedure getting them in, but they go in all right. Now, those two pieces are in. I'm gonna get a little bit of tape just to kind of hold that shut. Yeah, I had two issues. One was the, the first issue was that my, my electronics, despite the cleaning, were still presenting with an issue where two of them were working fine and one of them was a little bit of a problem and it was intermittent. This is the little button cluster and I could flip that around. Let's say this was the, the one that was giving trouble. If I flipped it around, then this would be the one giving trouble. So. It, it, the, the problem was in this and not in the, the, little, the little circuit board. So everything is all nice and clean there. What I ultimately discovered, I'll just show you this here. These four, that's it, these obviously are the, the three contacts for the three buttons and these are the grounds. So in order for any of these to work, this has to connect with any of them. But there are four of them uh, around each one. So this is a common, this is a common ground between them all. Essentially, this guy was not quite the, the, the place where the four, 
or the four little contacts on the outside of each one of these buttons, they should constantly be in contact and they weren't. So you had to really push the button down to get them to be in contact. And it, it led to an intermittent, intermittent operation. So here is a little fix that I came up with, which is just a little shim. I cut it out of the lid of a cereal packet, just a bit of cardboard, very thin cardboard. And that sits over, sits over this. And between this and the body of the wing of the space shuttle. And what that's doing then is it's just pressing our little button cluster down very nicely onto the onto the contacts. It works. But it took me a long time to figure out what was going on and that that what's that is what's going on. Interestingly, this particular alpha probe does not say made in the USA on the bottom of it. The other one I have does say made in the USA. Just saying. So now the hatches are in. Uh, we can, are, it's okay to have those, those buttons in position. We'll get this part in and then work that in, in position. So that was my first issue, that's resolved. The second issue then was getting everything back together and getting the housing to close back together really nicely. And I wasn't getting the result I wanted. I wasn't getting as nice a result as I was getting on the American built one. So I don't know where this one was made. Probably, I'm gonna guess England, but I don't know. But I do know that they did make toys in England. Possibly made them in other countries too. Anyway, it just doesn't say made in the USA. And I wanna see made in the USA written on it, on any of these toys, ideally. Anyway, don't matter. So here we go. What else? These have to go in first. These go in like this. So now my little shim is in there. The light diffusers. Drop that in there. Make sure the wire is going through that little slot there. And then we do our wheels. Let's see what's going on with them. So they're all the same. They're all the same. Okay, so the nose cone, that's nicely. This I think was part of my problem as well. The nose cone might have been like that. I don't know. It, it, it was not, I was not getting it, things to close up very nicely there at the front. And I'm hoping now having taken things apart and just checked it all, putting it all back together nice and carefully, that things will be good. Just going to use a little masking tape here just to kind of hold things. I'm pushing the pieces together with quite a bit of force there just to make sure the pieces are mating nicely. Get another one at the back here. Yeah, it was really frustrating um, putting this together earlier on today because it just, it was a bit of a nightmare. It just wasn't working out well for me. And so I'm hoping that I won't have a repeat of that now with this effort. I think maybe part of my problem was that I was drinking tea. Now I have coffee, so we'll see. Right. 
So be happy to, to kind of really make sure everything's sitting together well, because there's a sort of a slightly unforgiving nature to this. To the reassembly. And I'm gonna begin with the fixing that goes into the nose. Because that's where I finished last time and that's where I was having trouble. What's that? A bit of biscuit or something. Right. So now glasses. That's going to be in the shot. It's kind of awkward. I hope this is focusing and showing you what I'm doing here. Just working this in with the Leatherman. Feels pretty good. Gonna remove the tape and see how things are looking. Not too bad. I was having a lot of trouble getting that gap to close earlier on. Seems to have done a nicer job this time. I better do a quick, quick test and just make sure my electronics are all good before I set it all together. Something's going on anyway. So they're all good. And that's the shim, without a doubt in my mind, that's what is, because the, they really weren't working nicely until I did that shim. Where are we now? Where would you go next? Let me try, actually this one. First bit goes in pretty good. It's the very last bit. That can be a bit tricky. Ah, lovely.
important to make, really make sure the pieces are nicely together before sending in these fixings. And that's where that bit of masking tape comes in very handy. And also just giving the whole thing a little bit of a jiggle once you've got all the pieces in, just to make sure that nothing is snagging or pushing or holding a piece proud or anything like that. So it's just, you are uh, you're dealing with, oh, this is good. Yeah, the, the, you know, that everything is just really nicely mated together and there's no, nothing holding it out of position. This is a different different game from earlier on altogether. May the Alpha Probe gods stay with me. Okay. The leather man is really seems to be the nicest little pair of pliers for this job. I don't have a spanner that fits it. It might be an imperial size. I only have metric spanners and it's so small and such a shallow little head on it this head is really shallow and it has a little kind of a, a recess cut out of the center of it I, I don't know why they made it like this it's almost like an anti-tamper screw or something i don't know it's putting a lot of resistance up to me tampering with it i'll tell you that much so the Leatherman I have found to be the tool that works. It's a, just a fine needle nose pliers, but I can get some good grip with it. And the little needles fit down into, into these recesses, which is part of the challenge with the Alpha Probe. Now this one's giving a little bit of bother. I'm going to leave it for a minute and go back to another. Try another one. I might go back to that one. Oh, that one's flying in there. This one's going in nice. And I wonder did just blowing the dust out of it make the difference there. I'm going to do the same on this one. I'm going to just blow the dust out of it. I'll cover the microphone, hopefully. Be too noisy for you. Seems to be going in a bit handier. I think that could be important to blow out any little bits of dust, little bits of the polystyrene, the plastic, that kind of sit in the receiving part there, that get broken away when you, when you remove the screws in the first instance. It's 
feels pretty good. Lovely. Two to go. Thanks for staying with me. Tell you what, it's been a bit of an odyssey. And if anybody actually wants to see the video, it's long of all the, the suffering and the, the bother that went on. Just drop me a line. I'm not going to upload it because it's just, uh, it would be boring. But if you want to, you know, if you really want to see all of that, let me know and I'll, I'll be glad to send it over to you. Now, what are we doing here? We in business? Pretty nice. <clears throat> yeah. Lovely. Oh yeah, that's it. Perfect. One to go. And you can see just, just like a, a quarter turn, how far that sends it in. It's really only two rotations in total to get these fixings in. Now this one's giving a little bit of bother, so I'm gonna back it out do that little dust removal procedure. You're having a hope of getting these out with your fingers, they're just, they cut the finger off you. Need the pliers. see a little bit of swarf in there that's just dying to get jammed right in and make my life misery. Behave yourself for Andy. I hadn't discovered that earlier on, that business of blowing out the uh, little bits of dust. So maybe that's a, another useful bit of, bit of knowledge for those of us who are brave enough or perhaps stupid enough to open up the alpha probe. Seems okay now, seems to be going in all right. So I think that is significant, removing that dust. One more tiny little pinch. Come on. Good, it's good all round. Let's remove the tape. Have a look. There is a, a little part of these that doesn't that doesn't close in well, and it's it's this part here. That's just the design of it. You know, it's flimsy here, and there's no fixing for ages. The U.S. built one was the same, but now these are all feeling so much nicer than they were earlier on. It almost feels as good as an American made one. See, you see, it kind of, it creaks in a way that the American one doesn't. That's the, the thing I noticed. 
And I just wonder, I don't know what the difference is, because I was really examining very closely all of the parts. They're so, so similar, very hard to see a difference. In any event, we're back in business. The Alpha Probe is ready for its space mission yet again. Nice. For completeness, let's give her the old sights and sounds. Here's another just a little detail just when you're putting these in here. Uh, used for cotton bud earlier. Just, you know, try and get that wire to sit down, not to be sitting on top of the battery. This would have been nice if the wire came out of the side of that connector. It doesn't, but it shouldn't be a big issue. Closes quite nicely once you've made sure that the wire goes down along the side of the battery. The Alpha Probe. Finally, a good feeling. Thanks for watching. Have fun and um, get in touch if you are trying to do this job yourself and you need any advice. I'd be happy to have a chat with you about that. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.